Hey guys, it's been a while, but I'm back. Today we're going to be talking about the 5070 and we're going to be comparing it to not only the 4070 Super, we're also going to be comparing it to the 3070 and the 2070 Super. The goal here is to show what the progression has been for the last four generations of NVIDIA GPUs. Most 5070 reviews are going to show you what kind of improvements you get from the previous generation like the 4070 Super, but let's be real, most gamers aren't buying a GPU every year. Most people are usually holding off several generations before upgrading their GPUs. You may ask why am I not including the 3070 Ti and the regular 4070? Well, cause fuck them, that's why. And also, these are the cards that I have right now. So that's what we're gonna go with. We're gonna do some benchmarks as well as some gaming, and we're focusing on AAA titles here. So sit back, relax, adjust your sack. It's going to be pretty sicko mode. Before we get started, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And every video I post will be more Sukumo than the last. All right, let's get to it. First things first, let's talk about the specs we're dealing with when it comes to the 5070 all the way back to the 2070 Super. Okay, starting with the MSRPs, they have fluctuated, but really not by much. The price actually peaked with the 4070 Super at $599, and it actually came down $50 with the RTX 5070. That, like, never happens. AI tops, however, is becoming more and more important, especially as AI is taking over. Which one? One of us. You may ask, what the hell are AI TOPS? Well, TOP stands for Trillion Operations Per Second, and it's a metric used to measure the computational power of AI hardware. So basically, the more TOP you get, the more better. And we're talking about AI TOPS, you dirty dogs. But moving on to boost clocks, they've been progressively going up as the new GPUs have come out. One of the biggest improvements was between the 3070 and the 4070 Super when they jumped up from 8 gigs of VRAM to 12 gigs of VRAM. Nvidia is constantly improving its DLSS. The 2070 Super had version 2, while the 5070 now has version 4. So frame rates should be even better with the help of AI. Power usage hasn't increased a whole lot. The 5070 is using the newest PCIe 5.0. Finally, release dates. The 2070 Super came out about six years ago, which is pretty crazy because I feel like 2019 was just yesterday. I guess that's just me getting old. The 3070 came out in 2020. Good luck getting one of these back in 2020. GPUs were being hoarded by miners. Wait, what? I'm talking about Bitcoin miners, not miners. But anyways, 2020 was a crazy time to get a GPU, and good luck getting them at MSRP. There was almost a four year gap between the 4070 Super and the 3070 because there were GPUs that came out between the 3070 Ti and the 4070. And between the 4070 Super and the 5070, there's about a year and two months. I know this is a lot of info, but it's pretty cool stuff if you ask me. All right, let's move on to the build that I have it in. The CPU I'm using to pair with all these GPUs is the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D. It's on a Gigabyte B650 AORS Elite motherboard, 32 gigs of DDR5 5600 Corsair Dominator RAM, one terabyte WD Black NVMe SSD. Cooling the CPU is the NZXT Kraken Z73 water cooler. It's it's being powered by an EVGA 850 watt power supply, and it's all inside of the NZXT H9 Elite case. Not gonna lie, this build looks pretty sick. Moving on to benchmarks, the first benchmark I ran was Cinebench R24, and for some reason, they don't support the 5070. So the 5070 is gonna have to take an L on this one. The next benchmarks I ran were 3 d Mark benchmarks. Starting with Firestrike Extreme, the 5070 had a 17% advantage over the 4070 Super, a 72% better score than the 3070, and a whopping 127% better score than the 2070 Super. Moving to the Time Spy benchmark, the 4070 Super 
closed the gap by about 6%. It was about 52% better than the 3070 and 95% better than the 2070 Super. Next is the Port Royal benchmark. This is specifically a ray tracing benchmark. So the 5070 compared to the 4070 Super was about 11% better. Compared to the 3070, it was about 76% better and 141% better than the first generation 2070 Super. Well, it's kind of first gen because the 2070 Super is just a refreshed 2070. The 20 series cards were the first cards with RTX in the front instead of GTX. So that's why it's first gen ray tracing. Moving on to Steel Nomad, this benchmark is specifically a non-ray tracing GPU benchmark. The 5070 beat out the 4070 Super by about 10%, the 3070 by about 59%, and the 2070 Super by a whopping 109%. And the final 3D Mark benchmark that I ran was Speedway. This specific benchmark specifically targets DirectX 12, as well as ray tracing. The 5070 was about 15% better than the 4070 Super, 71% over the 3070, and 179% better than the 2070 Super. Dang. No, that's a lot of damage! It's kind of sad for me to see the 2070 Super so low, just because this was the first really nice GPU I ever bought. But you know what they say, it is what it is. At least on paper, without actually gaming, the 5070 looks pretty promising. Hopefully in gaming, it bends all of these cards over. <laughs> So, moving on to gaming, first game I ran was Cyberpunk. 1440p ultra settings with ray tracing. The 5070 did phenomenal, averaging 92 frames per second. But look how close the 4070 Super is, only 2 frames per second back. And the 1% and 0.1% lows weren't far behind either. However, over the 3070, it was about a 61% increase in performance. And the 2070 Super struggled to do 1440p, only averaging about 39 frames per second. Now when you do 1440p, without ray tracing, the 5070 increases the gap between the 4070 Super by about 23%, 76% over the 3070, and the 2070 Super did a whole lot better, actually averaging over 60 FPS, but it was still 116% increase in FPS when going with the 5070. Now for you gamers who are gaming in 1080p, these numbers are for 1080p Ultra with RTX on, and the 4070 Super surprisingly beats out the 5070 by about 2%. How the turn table Sadly, the 2070 Super still struggles to reach 60 FPS with ray tracing on at 1080p, while the 3070 still gives okay numbers. Now at 1080p ultra settings, no ray tracing, all the GPUs shine, the 2070 Super being the worst and still averaging 96 frames per second. Next game I ran was Starfield, 1440p ultra settings. And this one was a shocker to me. The 4070 Super beat out the average FPS of the 5070 by about 19%. I thought something was wrong with my testing, so I did it over three more times, and I got the same result. Oh, brother. Brother, this guy stinks! The 3070 struggled to even hit 60 FPS, while the 2070 Super was only averaging 37 frames per second. So it wasn't really that playable at 1440p ultra settings with the 2070 Super. Moving on to 1080p, the 5070 and the 4070 were neck and neck. The only real difference was in 1% and 0.1% lows. The 3070 seemed much happier at 1080p with this game, while the 2070 Super still struggled at 1080p ultra settings. The next game I ran was Hogwarts Legacy. 1440p ultra settings. Averages were way up for the 5070 at 190 FPS, which is about 35% better than the 4070 Super, 104% better than the 3070, and 164% better than the 2070 Super. However, the 1% and 0.1% lows were actually kind of bad. All across the board, it seemed that 0.1% lows struggled, while 1% lows were okay, but with all four cards, it was very playable at 1440p. Moving on to 1080p with RTX on, the 5070 shined with 123 frames per second average, while beating the other cards by 64%, 81%, and 128%. All four cards were playable, but I will say the 2070 Super wasn't the greatest experience with RTX on. Moving to 1080p ultra settings without ray tracing, the 2070 Super was much more comfortable, 
averaging 88 frames per second. All the other cards seem to do just fine as well, but it was interesting to see that the 0.1% lows on both the 5070 and the 4070 Super were lower than the 3070 and the 2070 Super, but honestly this didn't really affect the game much. It looked amazing on the 5070 and the 4070 Super. The next game I ran was Red Dead Redemption 2. 1440p ultra settings. Once again, the 4070 Super beat out the 5070 by about 2%. It even beat it out in 1% and 0.1% lows. Hmm, well that's not very sick of mode NVIDIA. Still, on both cards, it played very well. The 3070 really didn't have an issue playing this game at 1440p. However, the 2070 Super did struggle to hit 60 frames per second. Now at 1080p ultra settings, the 5070 beat out the 4070 by about 2%, beat out the 3070 by about 49%, and the 2070 Super by about 93%. All four cards could play this game pretty well at 1080p. This game is on the verge of being seven years old, but it actually still looks really good. And not only does it look really good, it's still really good. Really fun to play and it still requires a decent pc to run this game the next game i ran was shadow of the tomb raider 1440p ultra settings with ray tracing on the 5070 was better than the 4070 by about five percent 70 percent over the 3070 and 136 percent over the 2070 super all four cards were able to play this game at these settings without issue however the 2070 super came out whenever this game was newish and it did okay at 75 frames per second i honestly would have liked to see it a little higher. Now once you turn off ray tracing, the 2070 Super averages 110 frames per second. The other three cards have no issue as well, and at 1080p with ray tracing on, the 2070 Super is able to handle this game no problem. The 5070 was better than the 4070 by about 8%, 70% over the 3070, and a crazy 192% over the 2070 Super. And the final game I ran was GTA 5, and this is the enhanced version. 1440p with ray tracing on. Like I said, this is the enhanced version, so they introduced ray tracing, so this game does look really good. The 2070 Super actually barely got over 60 FPS at 67 frames per second. The 5070 beat out the 4070 by about 5%, and the 3070 was beat out by about 30%. The 2070 Super well, it was beat up by about 90%, but the 2070 Super was still able to play this game very well. 1080p ultra settings with ray tracing on. The 4070 Super actually jumped the 5070 by about 3%, and the gap between the 3070 and the 5070 was only about 8%. And it seemed like for the 2070 Super, 1080p was its sweet spot, even getting better 1% and 0.1% lows over the 5070 and 4070 Super. And I don't know about you, but this game is still really fun to play. So, after doing all those benchmarks, after doing all that gaming, what does this actually mean? Well, it means that your mom's a hoe. Hmm, <laughs> not quite. So based off benchmarks alone, and I'm talking about the 3D Mark benchmark test we did at the beginning of this video, the improvement that the 5070 had over the 4070, the 3070, and the 2070 Super looked promising. Now how did that translate into actual gaming? Well it seemed like in Cyberpunk, anytime we turned on ray tracing whether it was 1440p or 1080p, it struggled to beat out the 4070 Super. But there were huge improvements over the 3070 and the 2070 Super. Now what about Starfield? Well, the game is very poorly optimized, but I don't know. I don't, I don't know why the 4070 Super is 19% better than the 5070. And it seems like the 3070 and the 2070 struggle to play this game at all. Now the 5070 did manage to stay on top with Hogwarts Legacy. However, with Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1440p, the 4070 Super was able to beat it out. And this was the same case with GTA 5, the enhanced version at 1080p. What happened to Nvidia announcing that the 5070 was gonna outperform a 4090? In some instances, it barely beat out or got beat out by the 4070 Super. Now based off this, we can talk crap about the 5070 all day long, but I will say if you already have a 4070 Super or even a 4070, the 5070 is not for you. Which makes sense because like I said earlier in the video, most gamers aren't buying new GPUs every year. So if you have a 4070 Super, keep riding it.
Now if you have a 3070 or a 2070 Super, the 5070 is going to offer a crazy amount of improvement. It pains me to say this, but it does look like the 2070 Super's days are numbered when it comes to playing AAA titles. Sure, it can play most of the ones that are still out, maybe not at high settings, and probably not at 1440p. And this card is still great for esport games like Fortnite, Valorant, and Apex Legends. But as new AAA titles come out, they are only going to become more GPU demanding. I'm really looking forward to GTA 6 coming out, if it ever will come out, but I don't think this 2070 Super is going to be able to play it. But if you do play AAA games, my advice to you is to upgrade your 2070 Super pretty soon. And being that the 5070 is $50 cheaper than the 4070 Super, at least based off MSRP prices, might as well just go with the 5070. In that case, that is a good purchase. Now what about over the 3070? You will get a crazy amount of improvement over the 3070 when going with the 5070, but based off the numbers, the 3070 still has a lot of life left. Sure, if you got the money to blow, go ahead and upgrade it, but if you're deciding to upgrade your PC, I would look at upgrading other components before upgrading your 3070. So if you're asking me, should I upgrade my 3070, I'm gonna tell you no. See if you can upgrade your CPU, or add more RAM, or even upgrade your SSD. And obviously if you have a 4070 Super, buying a 5070 is a stupid purchase. So hopefully this video was helpful. Now you can see how much of a progression it's been over the last four generations of NVIDIA GPUs. And let me know what you guys think in the comments. Is it worth it for you with your current GPU to upgrade to a 5070? But please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Me and my boys Klaus and Josh Allen work really hard to make every video as sicko mode as possible. And like always, have a sicko mode day.